Hello, in this video I'll be using the two formula for centripetal force, mv square over r and mr omega square. Let's have two identical motorcyclists racing into a band and let's say they race into the band at the same speed. One of them slips. Which guy do you think it was? This guy or this guy? Since this is the circular motion that they are doing, the center of the circle is here, which means the centripetal direction is this way. It's the frictional force that the road surface exerts on the tires that provides the required centripetal force. So applying Newton's second law on the motorcyclist, we have friction providing the required centripetal force, mv square over r. So the radius of circular motion for this guy is half the radius of circular motion for this guy. A smaller r implies a larger frictional force because a tighter turn at the same speed requires a larger centripetal force. So if only one of them skips, it has got to be this guy. Now let's talk about two identical objects resting on a spinning disc. If one of them slips, which one would it be? Now on a spinning disc, these two objects do not have the same uh, tangential speed but they have the same angular velocity omega. So again, it's the frictional force that provides the required centripetal force. But this time we are going to write frictional force equals to mr omega square. This object is doing circular motion with a much larger radius. So a larger radius implies a larger frictional force. This is because for the same omega, a larger r requires a larger centripetal force. So if we slowly increase the omega of the spinning disk, this guy is going to slip first. So basically, for the same speed, a tighter turn requires a larger centripetal force. But for the same omega, a wider turn requires a larger centripetal force. Get it? Ta-ta!